welcome, 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 each and every one of you. Um, welcome those of us who knew Ravi Anayagaru and welcome to those who didn't but want to hear about his beautiful life. I'm going to begin with a bit of a chant and speak again and then move into the rest of the evening. So I invite you to chat with me, you know, with your mics off, close your eyes, just for us to be able to gather. Oh. 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 Hongam ganapata ye namaha. Hongam ganapata ye namaha. Hongam ganapata ye namaha. Humber buva suvaha. Tatsavitu verenyam. Vargo devasya dimahi. Tioyo na prachotoyata. Om bar bhuva suvaha tat savita varenyam pargo devasya dimahi diyo na prachotayata Om bar bhuva suvaha tat savita varenyam pargo devasya dimahi diyo na prachotayata Om apo jyoti samritam Rama bar bubavasuvaro. Welcome to our evening celebrating Ravi Anaya Garu and his beautiful life. Welcome, Sham, Ravi Anaya's Garu's son. A special warm welcome to you. When I heard that Ravi passed, I wrote Amma and told her of one memory of mine. And it was in 2003 or four, when the children from the school came and visited the ashram. And Ravi Anayagaru stood there with the children, tall, with a commanding air, with both a warm and light touch. And I could see that he moved easily and with great kindness and had an affable nature. And I sensed a respect that the children had for him, the way they looked at him, and the appreciation and love and warmth and how he looked at them. And this rare combination of warmth and love and a commanding respect that was present, I have always remembered. It was like he was like a proud papa, not filled with pride, but with love. And it made a lasting impression on me. So in putting this program together, I have been privileged to hear your stories and see pictures and through your eyes have witnessed the, the dedication, the absolute devotion, the deep devotion Ravi Anayagaru has had for her holiness, Ama Shri Karunamai. And what I have felt is that there's one word that sums it up for me, Ravi Anayagaru's work and service, who he was as a human being is that he emanated love and that he is still love. And Amma wanted us Western devotees and devotees from around the world to gather, to have a place to share the stories of our love and appreciation for Ravi Anayagaru. So Ravi Anayagaru, wherever you are, I hope you feel the shower of love tonight. that I'm gonna hand this over. Take it away. Okay. Um, this part of the Bhagavad Gita is from chapter two, verses 27 to 30. For certain is death for the born, and certain is birth for the dead. Therefore, over that thou shouldst not grieve, Death is as sure for that which is born, as birth is 
for that which is dead. Therefore, grieve not for what is inevitable. Consciousness is eternal. It is not vanquished with the destruction of the temporary body. Consciousness is that which is spread all over your body and is eternal. But they for whom I am the supreme goal, who do all work renouncing self for me and meditate on me with single-hearted devotion, these I will swiftly rescue from death's vast sea, for their consciousness has entered into me. All of you ready? Vadadayini Srimannarayini Vadadayini Srimannarayini He Jagadishwari Bhubaneshwari Vadadayini Srimannarayini He Jagadishwari Bhuvaneshwari Varadayini Srimannarayani Mani Dvipavasini Shiva Shankari Mani Dvipavasini Shiva Shankari Penusilavasini Lalita Mike Mani Dipavasini Shiva Shankari Penusilavasini Lalita Mike Kali Yuga Varadi Maheshwari Kali Yuga Varadi Maheshwari Narayani Sriman Narayani Narayani Sriman Narayani Varadayani Sriman Narayani He Jagadishwari Bhuvaneshwari Varadayini Sriman Narayani Chandra Karladhari Paradevate Chandra Karladhari Paradevate Shat Chakra Sanchari Nyanamike Shat Chakra Sanchari Nyanamike Chandra Karladhari Paradevate Shat Chakra Sanchari Nyanamike Kali Yuga Varade Lalita Mike Kali Yuga Varade Lalita Mike Narayani Hari Narayani Narayani Hari Narayani Varadayani Sriman Narayani He Jagadishwari Bhuvaneshwari Varadayani Sriman Narayani Mani Dvipavasini Shiva Shankari Vasini Shiva Shankari Penusila Vasini Lalita Mike Kali Yuga Varade Maheshwari Narayani Sriman Narayani Narayani Sriman Narayani 
चक्र संचारी ज्ञानाबिके कलियुग वरदे ललिताबिके नारायणी हरि नारायणी नारायणी हरि नारायणी नारायणी हरि नारायणी नारायणी हरि नारायणी mantra three times and um, for those of you who don't know the meaning I'll just say Mrityun uh, Jaya is a victory over death and it's a Shiva mantra and the, the meaning is Om we worship the, the fragrant three-eyed Lord Shiva who nourishes and increases prosperity as the ripe cucumber clings to the creeper May we ever be one with you, freed from death in the attainment of immortality. Okay, so if you want to mute your uh, program, mm -hmm. <laughs> so then we will do Murchanjaya three times. Okay. Om Bhur Bhuva Suvaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Pargo devasya dimai dio yonaha prachodayat. Om triambakam yajamahe sukantim pushti vardhanam uravarukamiva pandanat mrityor mukshi amamrutat. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sukantim Pusti Vardhanam Uravaruka Miva Pandana Murtyor Mukshi Amamrutata Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sukantim Pusti Vardhanam Uravaruka Miva Pandana Murtyor Mukshi Amamrutata Om Shanti 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 I'm going to make ready our video. Thank you. This video is about nine minutes. Jai Karunamai Namaskaram. We extend Koti Koti Pranams with deepest love and gratitude to the holy lotus feet of our beloved Divine Mother, Ama Sri Karunamai. We extend these pranams on behalf of everyone who has come together to honor Ravi Anayagaru, the younger biological brother to Ama, whom we all had the privilege of lovingly referring to as Anna, or brother, as Ravi served as a noble brother figure to countless devotees of the Divine Mother worldwide throughout his lifetime. With heavy hearts, we acknowledge that these past several years have been fraught with unprecedented global challenges. Through floods, famine, fires, war, disease, atrocities against nature, women, and girls, Amma has made unending sacrifices 
on behalf of all of us to keep us safe, healing, and whole, to mitigate disasters and awaken our hearts. The totality of her oblations is inestimable. We are incapable of understanding the level of suffering Amma has endured to ease our burdens. And all the while that Her Holiness has made these immense and unending sacrifices, she has endured the loss of her own nearest and dearest, elder sister Akayaji, and now beloved brother Raviji. These are significant losses for our beloved mother, as well as the world, as Amma's siblings served Her Holiness reverently and selflessly throughout their lives as divine instruments accomplishing phenomenal contributions. For this reason, as we honor and celebrate the extraordinary life of Amma's dear elder brother, we humbly acknowledge Amma's chosen siblings for their unrivaled inner purity, intense faith in God, and unfaltering inner strength. They have served Amma and her mission with unwavering devotion and self-sacrifice for the benefit of mankind, and we have been given beautiful blueprints on how to serve God and humanity through their examples. To celebrate Ravi Anayagaru's life, it is essential to emphasize that he had the rarest of rare experiences. Spending his childhood in the company of Divine Mother as a family member, he was immersed in the atmosphere of unconditional love, prayer, and worship created by their deeply spiritual parents. He witnessed and was profoundly moved by Amma's supernatural inclination towards prayer, meditation, the Vedas, and charity. He was imprinted by her tenderness and care for those in need, without ever a concern for her own safety. He also bore witness to Amma's ability to heal, her ability to communicate with those who could speak her native language and those who could not, including plants and animals. He observed her ability to perceive penetrating insights on the inner meanings of scriptures she was newly introduced to, capturing their spiritual essence in ways that even shocked Vedic scholars. This was a phenomenal upbringing by any account, and served to shape the rest of his life. When Her Holiness left for the sacred Penicilla forest to perform intense tapas at the tender age of 21, Ravi Anaya, Akayaji, Amma's elder sister, and Amama, her beloved mother, did not abandon Amma. They too left the comfort of their home and walked on foot for miles, as there were no roads at the time, to accompany Her Holiness into the wilds of the deep, forested Garudachala Mountains. While Amma was in seclusion, Ravi Anna, Akayaji, and Amma's mother began the intense work of establishing her ashram. This included every aspect, the buildings, the grounds, the infrastructure, and all of the conveniences we now benefit from greatly when we take part in Amma's meditation and Ayurveda retreats. Yet, in the midst of building an ashram, Ravyana, accompanied by his sister and mother, insisted on traveling many miles deep into the forest in order to make sure that Amma was well. Did we mention that this forest was home to tigers, cobras, and many other dangerous animals? At one time, Ravi Anna shared with an American devotee from Alaska named Joe. Joe, I could not meditate any day for more than half an hour, but Amma sits for hours and hours, day in and day out. When we saw her meditating in such a terrible forest filled with pythons, tigers and bears, our hearts melted with fear and compassion. Amma sat completely unconscious of her body with no food, her clothes covered with dirt and dust. Yet the radiance around Amma's body was so great that it was as if a second sun had come down to earth. Even the forest, which was green to begin with, became greener and brighter with her holy presence. After performing her intense tapasya for over 10 years, Amma re-emerged from the forest to offer her divine motherly love, healing, and solutions to humanity. Through her austerities, she had determined which of the Vedic teachings and practices would be of greatest benefit to people living in this difficult modern age. As a result, 
Her work encompasses the spiritual upliftment of her children, as well as a multitude of projects focused on the eradication of poverty and the disproportionate barriers that affect the poor. With the hardworking assistance of Raviana, Amma's humanitarian projects encompass the globe. To date, they include providing free medical care through mobile clinics, as well as the -the state-of-the-art hospital that provides a multitude of services, including free surgery, free housing for the homeless, addressing child labor head-on through the Right to Education Act, providing free education for life, including textbooks, supplies, uniforms, and mentorship programs supplying water treatment facilities to impoverished communities severely affected by toxic water, providing emergency disaster aid to communities affected by natural disasters, feeding and clothing distributions, leprosy care, wheelchair and bicycle distribution for the disabled, spearheading an awareness campaign for sustainable organic farming, and much, much more. Ravi and Naya's contribution to these projects has been instrumental to their success, working tirelessly with local officials, villagers, and state officers to provide vital services that have uplifted countless families. These noble projects have provided not only economic stability, but a new generation, and still with dharmic values and the desire to give back to their communities. For most, this would have been an immense offering and the definition of a life well lived. However, Ravi Anna continued his work for Amma, organizing many temple tours throughout the years. These two were huge undertakings requiring diplomacy and grace traveling throughout India to meet the many notable Vedic pundits who traditionally had refused non-Hindus from entering their temple doors. Raviji, under Amma's guidance, procured entrance from many sincere devotees who received the rarest of rare blessings, including the darshan of Jyotirlingams. From the largest details to the micro details, Ravi Anna ensured that Amma's devotees took the safest routes slept in the best accommodations, and received sattvic food throughout their sacred pilgrimages. It is with supreme humbleness, gratitude, and love that we honor Ravi Anayagaru, Amma's most beloved younger brother, an exquisite man with a sublime soul who lifted us all with selfless service, love, and pure devotion for Amma. Jai Karunamai. Thank you for that. Beautiful. Um, we're going to begin our tribute and memory section now. We're going to share our stories and our love. So, Shmirti, I think you wanted to okay. lead us off, correct? I want, it's a poem to Mother that I wrote, but it doesn't matter. I'll do it okay, now. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for you. Okay. So are we waiting till the end and then I do it or do it now? Do it now? Now we're we're okay. beginning our we're beginning our memory to our, our share stories and our yeah, begin now. Okay. Namaste, dear Devi Ama. Ama, namaste. I feel you must be missing too, your elder brother, Ravi Anayagaru. Yes, he is loved by so, so many of us too, remembering he came so often to our ashram just to do the many sevas there for you. I wish that we could be there sending moonlit special smiles, feeling feeling all shall miss your peda anaya across the many miles. And yet, how fortunate he was to be among your family too a special kind and gentle soul sent heavenward, angelic in the splendid sunny blue. Thank you, Shmirti. Thank you. Does someone feel moved to 
share. I have a small list, but Nalini. Thank you, Elizabeth, for organizing this so beautifully. Uh, Ravi Anayagaru is someone who has made a very lasting impression on me and without a, any question has become a foundational person in my life. He lived by example. He ha always had a loving smile, always patient, always mindful of his reactions to every kind of challenging environment he confronted. And there was a variety of them throughout the time that I was with him and witnessed in person myself. He always helped all of us with a loving smile, always mindful of his reaction to all sorts of challenging environments. He trusted his sister, whom he regarded as the divine and never as a sibling, knowing that every step he took in earnest effort would be handled by the divine. He, he managed monumental problems that others would have thought were severe crisis and all of it very patiently, very kindly. I have always known him to be compassionate, caring, and helpful. He has never been anything else that I have seen. That picture of him with the children in the schools is, is his classic. It's his, just, he gets up, he comes out of his room, and that's the way he is with the kids. He's not something that he had to prepare to be with the children or anything else. That's his very natural response. It's the same thing with all of us when we go to the ashrams. I am not sure how many of you have actually had the privilege of going to the ashram, especially at late hours in the night, and trying to get your accommodation, trying to get your baggage, trying to get yourself situated, trying to get yourself not knowing. And Rabbi Anayagaru just made everything seem simple and easy. It was like just floating through. There was nothing that he did not attend to from accommodations, from food, from giving us the facilities that we needed, from showing us where to go. There's no such a thing as a temple tour that Rabbi Anayagaru did not have his hands on. None of us would have had the grand tours and the many memories with, to vi visit the very special temples. And it was not a simple one-line statement of having him help make sure that the very sacred temples that were following Vedic rules, especially in Tamil Nadu, that actually would not allow non-Hindus, let alone foreigners. I don't know how many barriers he had to cross, how many people he had to talk to, but not each one of those temples was a simple task for him. I had the privilege and the honor and the incredible opportunity to visit 140 temples in over uh, uh, nine temple tours with Ravi Nagar, uh, Nagaru. Some of them very short, some of them very long, some of them extensive, some of them really challenging, some of them really exciting, and, and they were not necessarily a simple thing. We went through uh, all 140 temples and he was there waiting for Amma, he was there organizing all of us. He was there getting all of our meals. He was there having us served in all different places, Saparishi Kundas, at the side of the temples and at the, at the very halls. And he had also uh, arranged and organized this absolutely marvelous lecture at Tirumala Tirupati, where women um, are not really that well honored, only Vedic uh, gurus of great honor uh, 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 attend and give speeches there. And he had organized this speech for Amma, where only the very high special priests were there. When we started to attend, there were like about 150 of us in the room. And as soon as Amma started to speak and started to make the, make the presentations and started to do the bhajan, there were like 850 just wandering from all over the place. And Travi and managed every one of them who just came from all different directions so beautifully, so well. I mean, I was completely amazed. I mean, it's not a simple thing. It's like organizing a, a, a major wedding on a short notice or organizing a major something else on a short notice. That is how, how simply, easily, effortlessly he solved many, many problems. I will miss him dearly. I miss him already really very, very much. There is uh, not much I can say, but I can really say without him, it, I cannot figure out what the next temple tour would be like. And I really want to see another one 
sometime soon. He's Thank always you. in my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. Heather and Peter. Hi, um, Namaskar. Can you guys, can you see us? My namaskar is to Sham also, and thank you, Elizabeth, for, for putting this on. We really thank you so much. Um, I just have a couple short memories of uh, Ravi Anaya Garu. Um, I remember coming to the ashram in the early days, and Ravi was, Ravi Anna was doing construction, but I would come from America and I would be tired, I'd be exhausted. And every time I would be greeted with Ravi's incredible smile, I mean, he had a smile that you can see in the picture, he would light up a room and he would always inquire like how my family was doing, how my son was doing, how my wife was doing. And all my, my anxiety and my, my tiredness from traveling would just drop away from me when I would see that incredible, beautiful smile of Ravi. And so that stuck with me. And then the other thing that really impressed me was Raviana being Amma's um, brother, I thought that was beautiful. But when the final celebrations, the Purnahuti and the major celebrations would happen, I loved to see how Ravi would come in and offer his respects and his full pranams to Amma. As, as no longer just his sister, but as the divine mother. And it, it really inspired me like to see his devotion in these programs and how he would just come in. And the way he would come in with the beautifully dressed in his dhoti. And uh, it was like almost a god or a deva coming in and just so humbly he would bow to Amma. And that stuck with me and it really helped inspire my own devotion. And the last thing I would say too is that as a Westerner, and so many Westerners that have come over the years to see Amma, um, most of us didn't even know that, that Raviana was, was Amma's biological brother. And that just shows the, the humility that he had to be able to do all this seva. And many of us didn't even know who he really was. And so there were so many lessons that I learned just being in his subtle, quiet presence. So my, my Koti Koti Pranams to Ravi Anagaru and Sham to you and, and, and Elizabeth, thank you so much for putting this on. And Heather, maybe you have something you wanna share a personal experience, yeah? I'll pass for the moment, thank you. Okay. We can come back to you, Heather. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Thank you very much. Sean, would you like to speak? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so thanks, Elizabeth, for really organizing this amazing, amazing event. Um, so coming to talk about my father, I can talk all day uh, about his accomplishments, about his great things he had done for the SME organization at the same time to all the people and you guys have met him personally or privately uh, when he was on call talking with you all the guys coordinating the temple tours um, all the programs in ashram uh, he was uh, let me tell you something first uh, he was an amazing father uh, he indulged me with a lot of val values um, amazing brother for amma always supporting her in all her all her uh, every part of the life and uh, amazing husband for my mom helping in every way he could to help his sons and and he was an amazing father to my sister as well he, we always think great of him and i he was one of my role model and then amazing friend uh, amazing friend to all of you guys as you saw him smile all day he never gets tired of the temple tour he does, he, he sleeps around two o'clock in the night and then wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I saw him a lot of times, amazing hard worker. He, 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 he with all of the Amar family members built the ashram from the desktop with the big, big buildings we are enjoying today. As you saw in the, uh, as you saw in the video, 
uh, like the video re really made me recollect all the amazing time we had at the ashram and the events we have uh, participated in. Uh, that was the best moments I spent with my father. I was really, it was like, we we're just going back in my memory and how the time I spent with him. Uh, last five years was not a uh, good time. I did not spend much time with him, but I, when I had time, I used to always visit him back in India. And then, um, and then since last two years, um, um, due to COVID, everybody is not able to meet the family members itself on the, and Amas, due to COVID, we couldn't, we couldn't able to do the Amas programs in US. So that was one of the devastating things and yeah, all the travel bans and all. So it was, it was a little bit um, hard for everybody. Um, so yeah, like I like to say that my dad in his last days, always re recollecting about all the uh, things Seva he has done. And he, was all, he likes to talk about me hours and hours about the things he has done in the temple tours, all the, all the Seva he has done for the uh, Amma. And um, so uh, let me tell you something about the last days of his passing. So um, about the regret I had, I want to lift off this burden uh, I had uh, for him, the responsibility I couldn't able to do at, the la at his last moments. Um, so the time of January 10th, he passed away around. Um, so he was suffering, as you guys, most of people, you guys know that he was suffering through dialysis. So he was, he used to go to hospital regularly. Um, so around December and January, um, so I was in USA. Um, he was not well at the time. Um, he was going to the hospital regularly. At the time, the COVID spike was spike was high. And then um, uh, in the USA, in my in, in my at my location, um, my wife had a uh, miscarriage, um, baby miscarriage, in January first week. Um, I had COVID and she also had COVID. And then um, because of that, the miscarriage happened. And um, um, after that, I was devastated with the, as, uh, the miscarriage. And um, uh, like not after not long, not long time after that, um, I was, I got hard news that my dad's in the hospital. And uh, I was thinking that it's just COVID and then um, like because of the COVID, he got attacked by COVID when he was going through the do hospital visits. Um, so we took him to the Chennai hospital. Um, there, uh, due to the due to some uh, high blood pressure and all, he was he was taken to the ICU. And then I was in a situation where I had COVID at the time, and I was thinking to move, go to the go to visit him, but. Um, uh, I couldn't because the travel restrictions. And I was thinking that it's gonna be okay because it's just COVID and not, there is no lot of COVID deaths. Um, and then suddenly I got the news that he passed away. Um, I was uh, in a bit of a shock and I cried my heart out. A uh, thing uh, I had, Thing is that I wasn't able to watch him in the end. At the same time, com complete my responsibilities uh, due to the restrictions I had here. That was the worst day of my entire life. And this is gonna be, this regret is gonna take until end of my life. I couldn't able to, I can't able to do anything. And at the same time, yeah, this is the, the great I will have to, it's gonna hunt me through my entire life. And I never thought this day gonna come. And uh, I was always thought he's gonna be okay. But, but yeah, I'm glad he's in, I'm gonna visit him in the next life. I want to say to him all the things uh, he has done for me. 
and responsible he has completed all the responsibilities uh, as a father as a brother as a friend as a husband and uh, i'm i know that he's up there looking at me and i'm going to make him proud uh, definitely that's going to be a word i'm going to give it to him if he's just hearing me thank you thank you shaham um thank you i am um, really no words but i just hope you can feel our collective hug coming yeah. around you um all of us here for you and your heart and for you and your dad together we send you our love shell who else would um please feel free to reach out to me anytime you want to shell or thank you um my gosh what a story i will um i will share something um from some people in india that wrote and wanted their voices heard here <clears throat> but before i share one of them there's two stories um uh, one's from um a gentleman named setaraman balan is he here okay i'm going to read this story <clears throat> It's the first story. It is with profound sorrow I am writing these following few words about Ravi Anaya Garo who is no longer with us. My wife Meena and I have known Ravi Anaya Garo for more than 25 years. In addition to my immediate family, my extended family of my brothers, their families, my wife's brother, their families have all known Raviana Yagaru from the time we had our first darshan of Karuna Mai Amma around the year 1993 or 1994 We have fond memories of Raviana Yagaru from the very first day we met him at Penusila Kshetra Ashram in the year 1994 when we had gone for the meditation program organized by our beloved Karuna Mai Amma We reached rather late in the night as the roads were in extremely bad condition and we were concerned about our safe reaching. But when we reached the ashram, Ravi Anaya Garu was waiting for us and as soon as we arrived, he introduced himself and told us that Amma had told him that we were coming from Bangalore and that we should be given all the help we needed. <clears throat> in fact, we had not informed Amma about our exact program. being divine incarnate amma knew about our coming and also that food should be kept ready for us ravi anaya garu told us where to stay and also provided a hot dinner despite our reaching there very late in the night from that very first meeting to the last time we met ravi anaya garu during the navaratri celebrations in the year 2021 at the penusila kshetram ashram he has remained a great friend to us In my entire association with Raviana Garu not once have I seen him in any different mood other than that of a friendly disposition a man who was always ready to help despite his failing health in the later days I have seen him toiling day and night in the construction of the temple the residual accommodations and he was totally dedicated in carrying out Krunamai Amma's desire of building the temple for Sri Lalita Parameshwari Well, he has helped us every time when needed just he has, he has been helpful to one and all i would like to recall one particular incident here a few years back before the pandemic we had gone to the ashram for navaratri celebrations and my mother in law who was around 83 at that time had also come with us one of those days she fell down and hurt herself badly and was in severe pain Ravi Anaya Garu on hearing that despite his busy schedule due the, to the Navaratri workload came rushing to the room along with the doctor and organized for all that was necessary to get her properly attended to and only after ensuring that she was reasonably all right did he attend to his other engagements as i said earlier ravi anaya garu was a very kind hearted person 
always ready to proactively help anyone who needed assistance. It is extremely sad that he passed away at a relatively young age. It is difficult to believe he is no longer amongst us. Ravi Anayagaru will always be in our hearts and we are confident that with Karunamaya Amma's blessings, his soul will attain liberation. Om Shanti. And that is by a gentleman named Settaraman Balan. Who else would like to? I have more to share from other people who've written me, but I'd like to turn the floor to somebody else for a moment. Who would like hey, to? Bit, yeah. Rick, go ahead. Hey, if I speak, yeah, thank you. And thank you for hosting this wonderful memorial. Namaste to all my brothers and sisters. Wonderful to see you all. Uh, greetings from Singapore. Uh, so I uh, similar to Peter over the years showing up in the middle of the night to Benicilla because you never know about the road conditions and delayed planes. And I don't know why, but no matter what time we leave, we end up arriving at two or three in the morning, it seems like. And every time uh, Robbie was there with his, his warm smile, his disposition, and you could totally relax once you were in his presence after a very stressful time of traveling. So, um, so I always saw him in kind of a state of grace, walking gracefully. Um, he had a natural grace about him in his gait, in his walk. And, and when he's dressed for puja, he looked, he really looked stunning. I thought so. And so, um, okay. Sorry. So um, I got to know him best when Amma came to Singapore for a week and I hosted um, Robbie with Michael and Michael was here as well. And of course, the first thing he said is, where are we going to find vegetarian food? <laughs> it's okay. So uh, we're going to have to go to Little India because they have the best vegetarian food. So every day, like clockwork, he texts me like in the late morning, okay, come pick me up to go to Anand Bhavan. So we'd go to Nanda Bhavan for a vegetarian food during the middle of the day. And then, of course, all these other things happening in the evenings. So I got to know him that week and really got to know about his, his grace, his presence, his warmth, and this um, really genuine sense of love and care for people that he extended everywhere. So, so he had a strong uh, impact on me. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Jay Karunanai, uh, may I speak? I, said it's Michael. I was going to find you next. Please speak. Okay. So nice to be here with everyone. And um, uh, Shyam, so lovely to see you. You're so brave and you've become such an exemplary young man. Uh, miss you. Uh, you've heard all so much and you're aware of all the different ways that we were collectively recipients of Ravi Anaya Garu's uh, warmth and generosity. And I am deeply humbled and in gratitude as over the years, I was personally the recipient of that generosity. And um, through numerous times, whether it was picking me up at the airport um, at four or five, six o'clock in the morning to uh, making my stay um, more comfortable, uh, taking care of my health when I had a few health problems, and even um, through some <laughs> very funny now, but quite uh, uh, elaborate visa fiasco that I had to go through during one of my uh, one year when I was there in Ashram. He was always very supportive. I learned a lot from him. I felt like he was my older brother and also my friend, ate in his home, met his family, and um, he will continue to uh, live on in all of our warm memories and our hearts. And I just feel so grateful, humbled, and indebted to the warmth, the generosity that I received from a very strong, charismatic, intelligent, and caring 
Savite, the servant of Amma. So thank you. I, I won't go. Um, thank you so much for listening to me and a joy to honor him and his memory today and a privilege to have had the blessing of being in his presence as well. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Michael. Would somebody like to step forward and speak next? I have a small yes, list. I can and speak. I speak. Shalini. Yes. Hello, everybody. Namaste, everyone. I only want to say a few words about Ravi and Nayagaru. I'm sorry that the first time I said something about him at the beginning, I called him only Ravi. <laughs> Truth is, it was such a... It was so like family. When, when uh, I would arrive at the ashram, it was always called me. It was so, so super sweet. And it was like, hey, sister, how are you doing? It was just so humble and so much with us that, um, yeah, I was calling him Ravi. So of course, Ravi and Nayagaru. And um, there are a few things I want to say because we already said so much about him and his amazing work. And, and what I was observing when we were at the ashram is that he was so humble and so much in service. He was living with us in the quarters of uh, where we were all were. And um, he was always there and, and he was always giving and taking care. And, and I remember when we were going to the um, temples, with always giving abundant donation to the uh, to the poor, to the um, how you call them, you know, uh, to the people on the side of the street. He was always giving them a lot of uh, gifts, and he was just like warm and, and loving and and really loving Amma so much and being so much in service. And one time we were talking and I was asking him about. Amma and I was saying your sister and he was he told me Shalini she's not my sister she's Amma so there was this incredible devotion and respect like beyond the beyond and uh, so I'm really sorry he left as it is as the end of an era is uh, you know we had this COVID and now he's gone and we are missing the ashram and Amma and he's gone, and I'm really sad. But I feel that he's, uh, he's happy out there. Sometimes maybe you think I'm crazy, but when I tune in with the other side, I feel that he's, he's really resting in, this, in the light and in Amma, he's resting with Amma in her divine form. So he's really in a beautiful space, but he also misses us and we miss him and we will miss him and remember him. So, and I'm really sorry for Amma because both um, her brother and sister are left. And so, yeah, this must be really hard. So thank you everyone. I love everyone. And I'm really happy we can celebrate him today. Jai Karunamai. Jai Karunamai. Thank you, Shalini. Thank you. All right, can I speak next? Yes, I was going to call you, Subhadra. Please speak. Jaikar Namai, everyone. Uh, my respects to Ravya Nayagaru. My heartfelt respects and you know, condolences for their family, for his family. Um, I... I always think of um, Ravyanai Garu and Akkai Garu uh, like twins because they they are so similar in their mannerisms and you know beautiful greeting, smiling face all the time, and uh, never never fail to smile. It's a natural smile. Their face itself looks like that. That I used to wonder about that. So uh, that is the gift they had actually 
ಲೈಕ್ ಇನ್ನು ಬ್ರದರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಅಮ್ಮ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎಂಜೋರ್ಡ್ ಲಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ವೆಲ್ ಅಕ್ಕ ಗಾರು ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಗೋ ಫ್ಯೂ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಗೋ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾವು ರವಿ ಅನ್ನಯ್ಯ ಗಾರು ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಗಂಗಾಧರನ್ ಗಾರು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೈರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಮೆಂಬರ್ ಇಂದ್ರ ಗಾರು ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೂರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೋ ಸಾರಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ವೆಂಟ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸಾರಿ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ನೋ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಯು ಯು ಒನ್ ನೈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ಲೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಮೀ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಎಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ನಯ್ಯ ಗಾರು ರವಿ ಅನ್ನಯ್ಯ ಗಾರು ಟುಕ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಔಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಶೋಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ಸ್ ಮದರ್ ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾ ವಿ ವಿಸಿಟೆಡ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನೆಲ್ಲೂರು ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಹಿ ದೇ ಕುಕ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಹಿ ಸೆಟ್ ನೋ ಯು ಗಾ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಈಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಫುಡ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಟುಕ್ ಅಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಮೆಮೊರೇಬಲ್ ಔಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ವೆರಿ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಔಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ರವಿ ಅನ್ನಯ್ಯ ಗಾರು ಯು ನೋ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ಇಟ್ ವೈಸ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ಹಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅಕ್ಕಯ್ಯ ಗಾರು ಆಲ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಅಮ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ದೇವ್ ದೇರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಟು ಯು ನೋ ಆಶ್ರಮ್ uh improvement uh, ashram well being and uh, especially to for us people like to uh, you know us going from here taking every one of the us taken care of to you know very well that is that is i'm sure everybody who visited ashram experienced so i'm sure next generation i i have confidence they will be surpassing or at least up to the par of their elders. So, Jai Karnam, Mai. Thank you, Subhadra, Jai Karnam, Mai. Uh, Saraswati. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for uh, conducting this program. Uh, namaste to all of you. It's... Uh, um, to talk of uh, ravi anagaru is uh, very difficult also for me because he was also very close to me and uh, ravi anagaru was one of the pillars of manidipa ashramam i know him for the last 17 years i have seen him working day and night monitoring the ashramam following the constructions and renovations seeing officials traveling to different places day in and day out navratri organizations for 10 days is not an easy task everything has been settled in such a manner that every year now it is done easily he he, uh, he left his garment job to be at service of amma a man of grit and humble to the core his ever smiling face in face of all tensions of work is a remarkable future which we must acknowledge he was cool knew how to get the work done he was like my brother call him any time he was always there to help you once my car had a breakdown in the midst of the forest he immediately sent another car and driver which dropped me in chennai and sent the car to nellore for repair which was only uh, which was duly sent back to chennai after repair i'm sure many of us at one point of the or the other would have helped him uh, would have been helped by him in the form one one or the other his loss to amma is irreparable so it is for all of us and me especially my heart goes out to amma for this great loss no doubt um, the whole ashram is run under the grace of amma only but they were all the pillars of the amma who stood by amma who uh, in all the in all respects as far well as ashram is concerned he gave me a great respect always that when he when his son sham was living for usa first time 
He made Sham to talk to me and take my suggestions and blessings. He has merged in Amma and I pray all God to shower the blessings to the beautiful soul of Ravianna, Ravianna Garu. Thank you for giving this opportunity to speak about uh, Ravianna Garu. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lakshmi, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, please. Thank you for the opportunity, Elizabeth, and then um, Jaikan Namai, Emma, and everybody. I personally did not meet um, Ravi Anaygaru, but I heard nothing but all the good and best things from everybody about him. I am very sorry, Shyam, and uh, condolences. I'm sure Emma will give you the stamina, the strength to go on. Uh, like Amma says all the time, it is not how how long we live, how well we live. And in that respect, Anaygaru lived really, really well. And um, thank you for the opportunity, okay? Thanks, Elizabeth. Bye. Thank you, Lakshmi. Andrew, Conrad, would you like to speak, Andrew? Um, hi, everybody. Um, from Hobart, Tasmania in Australia. Um, look, it's beautiful to hear the amazing words of uh, gratitude for, for everything that Ravi has done. Um, I guess things that stand out and things that stand out for me and that I've heard consistently throughout this is his tireless work ethic. Um, uh, his compassionate, his compassionate nature, um, his, um, you know, always humble, uh, that hu humility all the time. Um, I mean, some of those programs, you know, they, they were full on, you know, that, and organising around the clock and um, you wouldn't know it, but he was there in the background, you know, a massive part of that. Um, you know, not, not as, um, not trying to kind of put himself forward in any way, which is, which is a great, uh, it's a great blueprint um, for devotional service. Um, I guess, you know, I think to myself, what would it be like to have um, a sister such as Amma? Uh, to, to grow up in that environment. And, you know, I guess pretty amazing. I mean, Ravi and I, Garu, uh, was, you know, completely devoted to her. Um, and um, just uh, really a, a, an amazing man. Um, you know, when I would come to the ashram, you know, he always made me, he always made me feel like it was my home. And I, I heard Rick say, you know, we'd arrive at two o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was. And um, he would just make me feel, you know, are you okay, Andrew? Is the food okay? You know, is your health okay? Um, and, and, you know, always caring. Um, and that's, you know, that's pretty lasting for me. Um, so, um, you know, Sham, thank you for sharing such beautiful words. And uh, uh, this is an incredibly beautiful gathering to um, remember Ravi and Ayagaru and uh, going to miss him tons. Um, but the legacy he's left for us to follow um, whenever the big programs arise, yes, we're going to miss his reliable hand. Um, but, you know, he's paved the way. Um, for us to follow. So, um, miss you tons, Ravi and I, Garu. Uh, namaste. Thank you, Andrew. Is Conrad here? Swamini, is your is your internet stable, Swamini? Oh, uh, Akil, uh, I'm sorry, Akila, please, please. I see your hand is raised. Um, yeah, please speak. Okay, Karnamai. 
See, Rabbi Anna, if you think about him, anytime you go to the ashram, the first person you see is Rabbi Anna. And like Amma, when you first see him, his first question is, go eat. No matter what time you walk into the ashram to check in, when you meet Rabbi Anna, the first time he, first thing he will say to you is, go eat. The same way, when you see Amma, Amma always asks, did you eat? The same the same way, this, he was always smiling, always helpful. If I need anything, when I was in uh, ashram, if I just see him, he knows if I need something. He will come right away and take care of it. And I cannot imagine if I go there next time, I won't see him. I will definitely miss him. I'm, I'm sure anybody going to the ashram is going to miss him because he was always there. Whatever you need, he is there. And we can always see he is in control. He, he takes care of people working there and we will dearly miss him. Thank you. Swamini, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Oh dear, love it. Okay. Uh, can, can you hear me? I can hear you. Wonderful. Hello, dear friends. Um, my family, my heart, and my soul. Ravi means the sun god, the sun. And I would say Ravi Anarkai Anayagari was just like the sun. The sun shines on all, no hesitation, no discrimination, no boasting, I'm the sun, I'm shining, look at me. It just continues to shine. So was his life. Looking at the video earlier on today deeply touched my heart because I realized how much more of a contribution he made than I could ever have known, even though I've been with Amo for 27 years. But I do remember this. When I first came to her ashram in India, it was when Penusila was still being built. The, what we see as a cobblestone pathways were just sand and dirt. The temple had not yet opened, but what was open was the heart and arms of Amma's dear divine brother. When I came, I didn't know anybody. There was no internet at the time. There were no phones that could reach the ashram. So I didn't know what to expect besides that our Amma would be there. And when I arrived, the most divine face greeted me, the face of her brother, such a kind man who put me and so many of us automatically at ease. That kind of hospitality is rare in our world. That kind of kindness to all is so beautiful and so again so rare. Sham, your name is the, means the blue of Lord Krishna. It means Lord Krishna himself. And that blue color is the same color that you see, that you can only see, illuminated by the sun. Because your father was there now we can see your sky, your beauty, your divinity, your heart, which emanated so beautifully as you spoke. And I know because he was your father and is your father, that son that is him will always be a part of you. I'm looking forward to seeing how you will shine because of how he shined. And I'm so glad and so grateful to have heard your words. And I'm so grateful to have known your father. It's so deeply saddened that when I come back to Penishila, 
which God willing will be sometime soon, that his lovely face will be there to greet me. But I know this, it will be in my heart. May his name, may his life, may his example always be with us. May his blessings, now that he is, I'm sure, merged with God, always shine upon us. I thank you so much. God bless you. I bow to you all. Thank you, Swamini. That is so beautiful. Thank you. I have another person who wrote to me, a few more, so I'll, I'll um, read that and then um, continue with other people who want to speak, I know. So a gentleman wrote to me from India and his name is Hati Kumaraswamy. I hope I got that right. And he wrote, Namaste, Madam. I am Pati Kumaraswamy from Bangalore, and I'm a devotee. I am associated with Ravi Anayagaru and Ama since 1992. <clears throat> Ravi Anayagaru is a very nice person, a simple person, a humble person. In the early days of his family, when his father passed away, he took the total responsibility of Ama's family by doing the job in the agricultural market committee as a supervisor. When Amma was doing meditation in the forest in the 1980s, there was no bus from Ganapali to Penasila, about 10 kilometers at the time. Ravi Anayagaru used to bring all the necessary provisions to Amma by walking and carrying the provisions on his shoulders. At that time, Amma also regularly celebrating the Navi, Navaratri festival for Dendes and Ravi Anayagaru carried all the provisions and home materials on his shoulders from Gaudapali to Penusila by walking. In this way, he served Amma from the very beginning. Experiences with Ravi Anayagaru. In 1992, Amma visited to a small town in Antipur district Guti for the public program. At that time, Ravi Anayagaru used to drive Amma's car from Penusila to that town about 400 kilometers. One day I attended Amma's program in the morning. At that time there was not, there was one person near Amma's car cleaning the car on the main road. At that time I had not yet seen Amma or Ravi Anayagaru. I casually asked that person, sir, are you Amma's driver? Immediately without hesitation he told me, sir, I am Amma's own brother. Then I was shocked and immediately said, I'm very sorry, sir. I am a new person to town. Then he said, okay, sir. And he didn't feel anything about it and continued to wash the car. Ravi Anayagaru is such a humble person. After that, I used to visit Penusila regularly for all of Amma's programs. Ravi Anayagaru always received me with a smile as that is the nature of Ravi Anayagaru. I feel deep regret that we have lost a very humble and sincere person. And then he writes, Namaste, Madam. I want to bring more information about Ravi Anna. In 1990, Amma completed her spiritual journey doing tapas for 10 years in the thick forest of Penusila. Then Amma stepped back into the materialistic world. Amma has given her first program at Hyderabad. After that, I arranged Amma's pro public programs in my native place, Guntakal, in Andhra Pradesh, continuously for five years. At that time, Ravi Anayagaru was the main person arranging and bringing Amma to required places with self-driving. In the beginning days in Penusila, there were only four small cottages with asbestos roof. In those rooms, we used to stay more than 100 devotees during the meditation classes. Ravi Anayagaru was the person who watched over all arrangements for devotees. At that time for bathing, we had no bathrooms, only thatched wallas that were arranged by Ravi Anayagaru only. At the time of the construction of Lalita, Devir, Lalita Devi Mandir in Penusila, Ravi Anayagaru was the only person behind the construction and completion of the temple. He, is continue, he continued to work as supervisor at his job in Nelaru and worked in the ashram and completed the temple. Ravi Anaya, Anaya was the main 
person behind all service activities of Ames at Penusila. I will give you a list of services. Hospital Rapur, from the beginning to end, he supervised the hospital and completed it. Ravi Anayagaru was the main person completing Gadapali High School. Ravi Anayagaru was the main person behind the construction of the free home for the poor in the surrounding villages with more than 250 houses constructed in that scheme. Ravi Anayagaru was the main person who completed the drinking water projects in villages, more than 100 villages. Ravi Anayagaru was the main person in development of all the ashraman activities and projects in temple. I deeply regret to say that we have lost a very important person in our family. To Ravi Anayagaru, Sadgati Praptiarastu, with regards, Pati Kumaraswami. Who would like to? Like to somebody like to continue? Thea, how about you? Take her in a mic. Um, that, um, what can I say? It was so, um, it was always so cherished by me when we arrived in Ashram to get that first hello, sister from Ravi Anagaru. And um, he really, he really truly meant it, like we were his real family. And um, that meant more than anything to me. And I, um, like Peter mentioned, to see him come into the temple, um, he would come in so regal. Um, and that regal look was really, a, for me, like a reflection of the nobility of his being. That was his real face for, for me and so humbling. Um, I just have one very, my favorite memory was, um, I, don't, I can't remember which year, but we were waiting one evening, the um, Western devotees and <clears throat> local Indian devotees and lots of children from the school. We were waiting for Amma to come back, I think from Australia. And um, because usually after that first hello sister, you know, there wasn't much communication as he was very on point and, you know, <laughs> didn't mess around really. And then, um, but that time we were waiting and he come up or he was standing near and he said, I wrote it down, so he said, look sister at all the souls who belong to Amma, he said, we are in old vehicles, he said, pointing to his body. And these children are in new vehicles, but we all belong to Amma. And I really, it really pierced my heart. Like I, it was clear that that was how he was seeing existence. Um, you know, it couldn't be manufactured. He was completely surrendered to the goddess, Jaikarana Mai. Thank you, Thea. Jai everyone. I've had the privilege of meeting with Ravi Anayagaru 2011 when we arrived. And Sham, your father, just like everyone had described, is a beacon of light. And that exact smile that we, myself and my husband, were greeted. We just wanted to visit the ashram just to wanted to see the place as we were in Chennai. And he said, no, 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 wait. I have to let Amma know you're here. And the next thing we were, Amma had sent word that we have to stay there. And it's simple as that, it, that humility that Ravi Anayagaru had, I think we could all follow that humility that he had for so long shown for everyone. And I was very privileged because Ravi and I got us joined on the Sri Lankan tour. A few of us were very fortunate to be on that tour. And I was privileged to capture so many loving, touching moments of Anayagaru. He was so humble that 
didn't even show anything that he was the, uh, his sister was as everyone said that Amma's brother. He was just like any one of us. And his nephew Gokul's brother Bharat took such wonderful care of him. And I captured these beautiful moments just that I thought it was so precious to see both of them walking. I mean, he hardly talked. And also I was privileged. He was on our coach with Lalit Gunaratna. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful five days we had in Sri Lanka. Even though he, had, he was in pain, he could not walk well, but he did never complain. He just, sometimes he would hold his uh, Bharat's hand and walk and always smiling. I mean, this is the precious tour that I've had with Ravi Anayagaru and Sham. You're so blessed to have had a father like him. And I know he will be always your mentor. And uh, everyone, we are just so blessed, whoever who had had the pleasure of meeting Ravi Anayagaru to just remember him the way he was and emulate his, um, his ways of uh, being around other people, always humble and respectful. And that's how we remember, well, I will remember Ravi Anayagaru, Jekar Namaye. Thank you, Mirtia. I have a few more people on my list here, and I'm sure there's others. Let me just go through the list to see. Is Conrad here? Tom, um, I think you're here. Would you like to yeah. see him? Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you for the call. Well, I just wanted to say, first of all, our uh, loving greetings to Sham from my wife, Pratima, and myself. And as people are speaking, one of the things I thought of is how much regret I personally have that I did not show more gratitude to uh, Ravi Anaya Guru. So I'm sending out all of my gratitude that's in my heart to him now in the heavens. I truly am. Because he did so much and I'm not sure I ever directly showed him gratitude. So I'm expressing it now in front of everybody and, and right straight up to heaven to him as well. I wanted to say that first. Uh, this, the, the, the story I have is small, I, I think compared to so many people had you know, such lengthy experiences with him, but it was very profound. We were, it was a while ago, uh, I was at the ashram and we were taking a bus to uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, temples, and it was in the earlier days when we did not have the nice buses. It was an old bus, and uh, the shocks were very poor. And somehow I ended up in the very back of the bus. Well, uh, some people know I have unfortunately a genetic muscle disease and some other physical problems, and I was in torturous pain because in the back of a bus. Uh, you feel the shock more than anywhere else in the bus, practically. And I believe, I forget his name. It, may, uh, it was a man from the TM movement. He went up and he told Ravi. Uh, and in an instant, Ravi forced me to sit in his seat and he sat on the floor next to the driver, like where the steps come up from the door the entire way. And I was fine up there in the front. There was not the, the, the shocks and the bumps. But that just shows you an example of, uh, you know, just without thought. And I'm sure he was not most comfortable. I, I didn't know he had all those physical problems at the time. Uh, but I send out my tremendous gratitude to him now because I, I wish I would have done it more at the ashram because also I was greeted many times welcome, with great welcome from him. And another thing I wanted to say about him is that uh, everyone has commented on his beautific uh, uh, manner of, of being um, uh, so humble. And I 100% concur. But the, one of the things about his humility is that it was so genuine. The, it was natural and it was genuine and it was real. It did not have to be forced or practiced. 
it simply was who he was. And I wanted to add that as well. And uh, so that is my antidote. We give our, our love and our greetings to Sharm and all of your family, Sharm. And we look forward to seeing you again. And, and hello to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Of course. Radha, you've got your hand raised. Come and speak. Jai Karnamai. Thank you so much for your patience. I'm sorry to take your time. Um, this is the most beautiful opportunity uh, and time that we have together to bow our heads and hearts to our, I think he would like us to call him our brother, our brother, Sri Ravi Anaya Garu. I guess that's really way too big of a step. So I will just say, uh, I'll take away brother because that makes us in the wrong relationship to Amma. So, he he's his divine soul is i i am sure in the most beautific radiance and uh kingdom of light i always remember him uh, as we would come into the ashram he would be sitting in front of his room now let's talk about his room this is a man who who s stood behind the creation of an entire uh money dvipa manifest on our beautiful blue pearl of a planet. Here is Mani Dvipa descended from the highest realms, and he is living in a small room at the end of the court, within the guest quarters where we all stayed. And he would be sitting out there, just radiating his smile and hello, sister to, or brother to whomever came. And we would feel so welcomed uh, his generosity and his seva and his heart, uh, loving nature, his humility and his, his, the word devotion isn't even large enough, I think, to encompass his dedication to Amma. And uh, we remember all of these things with him. He was so accessible to us. I remember we would joke with him. We would come up to him and tell him, you must come to America on the next tour. Believe it or not, he would actually take us up on it sometimes in his, he had a great sense of humor and he was humoring us and being kind to us and also playing with us. He would say he would come one day. Uh, maybe he did, but without his body. Uh, the most incredible thing is he laid the tracks for Amma to come, I think, with, not without effort on her part, but he made it a path of love for her to hopefully just sail on like the swan. And uh, that was a great gift to so many souls in our country. So we have only extraordinary thanks. Uh, he's a role model for us. I will always forever see him sitting in that seat outside of the little room that where he just brought his huge spirit and and his huge soul and his huge beyond describable mission and seva and he parked it all in that little tiny place uh, with joy. So I just want to express my thanks. Uh, salutations to you, Sham. Thank you for being with us. We touch your feet. Thank you, Amma. Beyond language. Hariyam and uh, Jai Karnamai. Thank you, all devotees, brothers and sisters. Om Shanti. Amma is here. Hello, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Amma. You can hear you so much. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes, you're very soft, but we can hear you. Okay. Um, so, Nana, you shall you give some sound, Nana? Yeah. Oh. Now it is okay? Yeah, it's very soft, but we, we hear you, but it's soft. If it could be louder. 
ओके ओके एंजिबेट वांट यू हैव टू डू इस सम पीपल आर ऑलरेडी दे आर रेडी दे लेट देम स्पीक एंड देन आई विल टॉक लेटर Okay, so we'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, just a few more people, and then um, we have the five-minute video of okay. the pictures of Rav Raviana Yagaro. Is that okay, Amma? Okay, okay, no problem. And we we'll work out sound. All right, thank you. Okay. Was it Nalini? Somebody had raised their hands just before who would like to speak. Uh, Nalini. Jai Karnamai, Amma, and all our family here. and this beautiful tribute to a very very beautiful soul we are so blessed to have known um, ravi anna or um i personally for me he is very helpful very sweet very unassuming uh, very gentle mm. and when um, uh last uh, the very last uh, visit had gone uh, for the retreat i had to uh, call my husband and we had no reception and he was so helpful he without any problem he took me all the way upstairs all the way to the terrace and patiently sat with me and made sure that i could get the connection any time we asked for help he was there to help and no no matter was too small or too big he was just there and he did it with so much grace and so much humility mm -hmm. there was no question of any ego because he was amma our amma great amma's brother no but there was no question of showing that he was just doing seva in a most beautiful way in most humble way and i think that is just intrinsic nature and we are indeed blessed uh, to have known him and somewhere wherever his soul is i offer him my pranams and my gratitude thank you thank you nalini is there anybody else present there's a few more but i'm not going to read them because they're not present but is anybody present that would like to share namaste before we continue namaste. to the 5 minute short video oh heather namaste. yeah please hey, my karuna mai family i'm so honored to be with you all today and sham i i felt your pain and hardship you're going through and I I just have no words to say except for that I heard you and I can feel you and uh and I support you in my way we support you and um I wrote a little experience I had with your father with um Ravi and I got to and it was in the early days the very very early days the first year when the temple can when when there was no temple at the time <laughs> there was just uh, one level of a boarding room and everything was beautiful and white and perfect and we were greeted by by Ravi and I got us um beautiful warm smile like the radiant sunshine and Mm. And I had my baby with me. <laughs> and this was before mosquito nets were used. So when I figured we needed some mosquito protection, I bought a coil and I put it on the back of the bathroom toilet <laughs> because that's where most of the mosquitoes were and I was unpacking and taking care of my little son and I I had lit the coil on the back of the toilet because here in the in the United States the the back is porcelain it's hard kind of ceramic feeling but there I didn't realize it was like a plastic and so as I'm unpacking I noticed a, a smell and I was like what is this and I went into the bathroom and I noticed oh no 
I've ruined Robbie's beautiful, perfect building. There was a, a black mark and a divot on the back of the toilet. And I went into like this panic thinking, oh my gosh, I've ruined Amma's ashram. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, my heart was pounding. And how am I going to have to tell him and we'll pay for this and we'll fix it. We'll make it right. And I, and I you know, marched downstairs and I tap Robbie and say, please excuse me and forgive me there's something wrong in the room and his eyes got big and something's wrong. And I thought, Oh gosh, really? I've, I've destroyed everything. And so I said, come with me. And he followed me up the stairs and I showed him the toilet. And I said, I burned it with the mosquito coil. Please forgive me. We'll replace it. And he just looked at me and his, his eyes completely softened and his forehead completely softened. And it was like, through his eyes, I could almost see like a horizon of like a setting sun peace a full beautiful horizon and and all of a sudden I relaxed and he's like he smiled almost like are you kidding me this is this is what you're <laughs> upset about and my whole nervous system calmed down and I realized I didn't destroy the whole ashram it's okay and he put me at ease and I I never saw somebody respond like that to an accident or an incident like that with a material item before in my house. And so it was so heartwarming to see through somebody else's eyes, a bigger picture of what really mattered. And I didn't realize how much he had juggled in order to make that building possible in order to make Navaratri's possible or any festival. And, and I never realized the extent of his service. And I'm just so humbled and honored that I had a moment with him mm. where he made an impact, a permanent impact to me. And uh, I'm really grateful and thank you everybody for this share and um, Elizabeth for and um for creating it. Jay Karunamai, thank you. Thank you, Heather. Gonzella, your hand is raised. Namaskar, everyone. As others have said, Ravi. Anagayu, Anagaya Garu lived a life of divine qualities. The ones that stand out in my mind are his devotion, his humility, and his strength. Now, his devotion shone beautifully. It was radiant from his face. Anytime I saw him in Manidwipa Temple, he, he, just the memory of it inspires awe and joy in me because this the divine was so great. And his humility, his humility was ever present. It was ages until I understood that he is Amma's biological brother. And it's only been tonight that I learned of the vast role that he played in Amma's charities. He was truly a humble man. And his strength, his Supreme strength was also very gentle. He, people talked about seeing him with the children, and that gentle spirit that could be with a child, yet still get a, a temple or a hospital or water treatment plants, a hundred of them built. So strong. He accomplished so much in that lifetime. It's amazing. And I'm grateful personally to him to have seen the charities. And, and to have been on the temple tours that he organized. So his devotion and humility and strength stay in my mind and my heart. And I haven't heard the following anywhere said by anyone, but I feel like I must say it. His strength and devotion to Amma are reminiscent of Lakshma's devotion to Lord Rama and to Sitama. 
our divine mother, Lakshmi Sita Devi, beloved Amma, has again had her brother depart from this world. And I offer my condolences to the family, especially you are such a strong young man. Thank you for sharing your heart and your love with us. And I know, I know that the divine was in his ear upon his passing. I know that Amma welcomed her as he merged with the divine. And I'm grateful to have known him. Thank you so much. Namaskar, Jay Karnamai. I think we have one final person speaking, Leela. Um, I'm just so grateful to be here with all of you, beautiful divine family and Alma. Um, I, don't, I didn't know Ravi Anaya Garu as well as most of you here, um, but I have two experiences to share. And the first one is that um, I just, every time I came to the ashram, I felt like I was entering another loka. I really felt like a pebble being dropped into this amazing divine pond. And <laughs> I felt that Ravi Anaya Garu was really just an extension of Alma's beautiful consciousness. I felt so much embraced by the whole atmosphere and he was so much um, saturated and woven into it. For me, every interaction I had with him and everybody was like, helping me to settle into this totally different universe that I needed time to kind of adapt to. And um, it was always so beautiful and I was always in awe. And um, that another experience was the very first time I came to the ashram, um, I actually had a very hard time. And um, some many people were concerned about me and um, he came into the, um, the breakfast hall, the dining hall, and he um, wanted to make sure I was eating and he was upset that I was only eating oatmeal and I didn't even know who he was, but I felt like, wow, <laughs> I really better eat something else because he's really concerned about this. And so it was just so sweet now knowing who he was. I feel so honored um, to be a part of this community and family. And and I, I feel that he is so connected with Alma and her divine consciousness and and I and I just wish all send all love and um, best wishes to the family that you feel that grace that's gotta be with each and every one of you. Jay Crinley. Elizabeth? Anybody finish Elizabeth? Oh mother we can we can finish we can the video we can play after you leave. Would you like to, we could play the video, the five minute video at the very end. It will be a nice. Okay. You, you, okay, everybody finished right now, no? Anyone is there? Swamini is there? Swamini. Swamini? I'm here. I am here, Allah. I bow to you. I love you so much. Swamini can speak. I, I had spoken, but I can, I can again. I don't want to bore anyone. Ah, please. But, um, I had mentioned that Ravi Anugaru was like the sun who he's named after, shining his radiance on all. And I remember Amma, in 2009, when he came back from the Parliament of World Religions, like a hero, one of the first women representatives to the Parliament in the history of humanity. And as we were proceeding, so many people met you on the road to celebrate you. And at the end of the celebration, there was your beautiful brother with the most beautiful smile, his eyes full of so much love for you. That kind of love outshines the world. He was so devoted, so proud. And because of you, so divine. Now I know 
because of your grace, he is fully merged with God. And he has become our blessing also. And I pray that the selflessness that he embodied, the giving, giving, giving like the sun that was always his way, can be remembered by us all and be practiced by us all. When we want to take credit for something, let us remember Ravi, who did not take credit. He shined like the sun and never said, look at me. He just illuminated you with love. He illuminated this world with love. And I am so grateful that I could have known him, that I could have seen his smile, and I could have seen his love for you. I love you so much, Jay Karnali. Thank you, Swamini. Love you so much. Elizabeth? Mama, I think we're ready for you to speak. Okay, Elizabeth. Thank we'll you. We'll share the video at the very, very end. Okay, Elizabeth. Thank you for your effort and uh, make this program beautiful and uh, yourself and Shanti. Uh, I really appreciate both of you so much. Thank you all of you attend for this program and um, speak good words about Avianna. His soul is happy to listen all his sister's comments and uh, things from Divine Board. I have to stop. Om Mandalantar Ghatam Hiranmayam Braja Manava Pusham Suchismitam Chadi Diti Makhanda Vigraham Chintaye Munikoti Sahasra Sevitam Chintaye Munikotla Sahasra Sevitam Sankarasya Chetitam Kadamrutam Sankarasya Chetitam Kadamrutam Chandra Sekar Gunanu Kirtanam Chandra Sekar Gunanu Kirtanam Nila Kanta Tava Pada Sevanam 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 Sambhavantu Mama Jan Majan Manim Sambhavantu Mama Jan Majan Manim Sambhavantu mama janma janma neem Mukam karoti vachalum pangum langayate girim Yatkrupam tamaham vande paramananda tandavam Yatkrupam tamaham vande paramananda tandavam Om chitambarana traje swaraya namaham Om arurachala sivaya namaham Om sivaya gurave namaham Embodiment of Divine Souls, Amma's most beloved children. I'm very glad to see all of you today uh, in the June program. Elizabeth did a great job and Shanti, Elizabeth both are, they did a great job to see all of you today on Ravi and Nas condolence program time. We have a song, a philosophical song Vasta Vottidi Pota Vottidi Chesina Punyamu Chadani Padartamu Vatsuna Niventa. Very simple total philosophy is in this uh, two words. Vasta Vottidi. That means coming to this world is not truth. Going back from this world is also not truth. But what the punya, what the merits we did with our hands, that accompanying with us to the countless lifetimes. Countless lifetimes, our merits are going to accompanying with us. If we do the demerits, those karmas also haunting us, and then we are going to get the karma bodies only, not the spiritual bodies, and spiritual attitude is never going to come. All the 25 years onwards, I came to all of you to the different countries, Australia, London, and Sri Lanka, US, Canada, everywhere. 
all my children did a great great seva for amma all the children in all the states in us in all countries wherever i have been i got your abundance of love in the form of your seva uh, seva have to be with humbleness if humbleness is not in the seva uh, seva is not beautiful seva is not beautiful so that's what we saw in anna program he was humble he was really humble open heart and very simple personality and uh, talking everybody with cheerful face and humble he never have ego and all the things so that's why we love him so much and we miss him physically he did so much and all of you did so much for amma everybody if i am going and sitting on a stage behind that how many people are working all of you know that no because everybody was my organizers and everybody was dro- driving amma and arranging so many things and fundraising programs and doing incredible seva you never do that things in your life but for for my sake you did so much you did so much so my love and gratitude to all of you in this program time to not only to ravana to all of you also with a gratitude heart and with a humble love i show my gratitude to all my people swamini to everybody everybody she took me to the rajas parliament program and um, she otherwise it is not possible for me to go to the rajas parliament program we don't know how to go there swamini was took so much risk and she put all her effort and make me to sit on the stage and allow me to do the program similarly innumerable people in london in australia what a beautiful program hansini did in sri lanka what a beautiful programs you no know? everybody was behind the curtain running 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 so much for amma sake day and nights of course the program is one day two days but people effort was uh, really incredible so that's why i chant this loka shankarasya charita amrutam chandrasekara guna anukirtanam nilakanta tava pada sevanam oh, oh almighty i have to be do your seva if any lifetime i took again frequently i can't come to this world if i come again back any lifetime i have to do your seva uh, again and again in any lifetime also chandrasekara pada sevanam nilakanta tava pada sevanam sambhavantu mama janma janmani if i took another body in after so many uh, years light years later my seva to my children the pada seva to the almighty is to my children only because i saw the almighty in all of you so that's why um, ravi annaya did the seva selflessly his entire lifetime he says i dedicated my life mold me uh, like um, how i have to useful for you you have to mold myself he says akay also says the same thing everybody even michael san came so when he says he was sitting mother i came for your seva i want to be in your entire life here and i don't like to go back again i don't like son you have to marry no mother i don't like to marry any i don't like uh, go to the women he says mold me like what the way you have to Uh, do your seva for yourself he says to me so like that no so many people says uh, of course all my householder children also saintly people <laughs> they are very very saintly people their hearts are not really attached with the paltry things and they are so spiritual very spiritual jos and yeah, how many people passed away you know very recently how many people passed away in this corona time we miss all the people uh, so much and the coming is not the truth going is also not truth but how much time we are here in this very short time what the seva we are doing to the mankind that merit is going to carried by the jivatma the soul 
soul is different within us the body is different body needs this and that and so many things so we are praying for the body sake and god i need this god i need this i need a car i need a home i need a wife i need a son i need a financial status and asking so many things for body sake only but the thirsty for the jiva inside the atma that the thirsty was coming to this world the jiva says no 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 this lifetime i don't like to waste my time i just want to be in god only in godly consciousness only i don't like to do any other activities i just want to be with god and any seva i do it must be reached to the god in the form of the human being so this is the worth we do but unfortunately sometimes we are deviated and going this side that side that that was happened uh, so jiva inside the jivatma have so much thirsty there is a story in bhagavatam the story was gajendra mokshana there was a elephant that elephant have so many thousands of elephants around that and it was not this time, this time, kalpantaram fourth kalpantaram in that fourth kalpantaram time that elephant was traveling and going to a pond the pond was so beautiful lotuses and very beautiful all the uh, elephants are entered into that pond and the wife and children grandchildren so many uh, elephants are accompanied by the elephant and then they are uh, take they want to drink some water then they have to drink the water and go away but they never do that they want to take shower and take the water from the pond and sprinkle on everybody and enjoying so much and he was so proudly doing all the things and finally a crocodile was inside that pond it was watching this disturbance what is this disturbance who is this doing this disturbance so immediately it get very angry and upset that crocodile came and hold the feet of this gajendra gajendra is the biggest elephant the main leader of the elephants all the elephants are run away but the elephant was caught by the gajendra this is the story is not the story of the elephant and the crocodile this is the story of a human race what is this uh, pond this is samsara this is samsara what is the crocodile it hold it hold the feet of the human being it never allow and elephant was very strong very powerful how much she want to come out of from that crocodile mouth not possible it caught up the feet of the elephant and how much she was trying not possible so then uh, so all the other elephants also pushing and dragging and not possible thousands of years it was there that time was calibration different calibration of the time so it was there and crying and crying asking for the help of the god oh god help me help me god help me god help me god praying and praying and praying and praying for the body saying and finally i have no more um, strength in my body completely my body become skeleton and i have i can't call you anymore oh god i am in the final stages right now god you have to bless me for spiritual liberation beautiful this is the main story what here first it was asking for protection protection for the body to go back and do the um, children and family and everything to enjoy the life again but here finally when she was caught up and caught up and caught up in the um, crocodile mouth and then finally asking i don't like to be here anymore i just want the liberation from this body i am not asking to protect me from this crocodile give me liberation or take me to merge in your self this is the right right prayer what the gajendra did gajendra is the elephant the human race is also in the caught up in the world we need this we need that we need this we need this we need so many thousands of needs are there of course but finally what is the need 
what is the right way we have to ask the Almighty? The Supreme Almighty is with you, within you, in front of you, beneath you, above, everywhere. You are not able to experience that light, that joy, that supreme truth. And we forget about that and merge in this happiness of these worldly things. And finally the day comes in the life. Suppose we are on the bedridden, that time prayer, how it is. Even that time is also you have to pray. That's what Sanatan Dharma says. Even the last moment also you have to say, one time Narayan, give me liberation from this mind, body and ignorance and all the karma load. We have to ask that desire. So the story is, it looked like a Gajendra was caught up by the crocodile and fighting and fighting so many long years and praying Narayana. Narayana came and protect the Gajendra from the crocodile. Uh, that story was very attractive story in Bhagavatam. But there are so many There are so many people around the great and he was regular, you know, that pride is regular in anybody's life also. If a person is with a lot of finances and with a lot of everything, the pride is so common in life. But what happened? Coming here in the in this world, the inside the self then our life is again going back, again coming back. Going, coming, going, coming, going, coming, going, coming. In coming and going and coming and going, one lifetime, definitely we realize why we have here in this world. What is the purpose of the life to come here to do all these things in the world? To take care of these things, to take care of this, who is this person? Who is his granddaughter? Who is these things? Why I am doing this? I have to have a thought about this. The thoughts are not in the regular thing. Uh, we have some beautiful videos. In one of the Viswanath Mandir, evening time, uh, how many birds I can't count? Some thousands and thousands. Of, we will show you that video also. Thousands of birds are going around the temple Parikrama, 108 times. 108 times you have to count that. 108 times exactly the birds group was. Thousands of birds are going with a long noise. Some sound comes from that. And after that, they went back for the rest. The birds have also knowledge. We show you one of the video. The snake brought a belva patra and put on the sivalingam. We, we saw also that also. Like this, you know, so many birds, animals have also knowledge. But compare with the birds, animals and the things. And even in the Germany, one of the temple, the peacocks are going around Saraswati Devi, uh, Pradakshna, Parikrama, going around Saraswati Devi, Murti, so many times and doing the Namaskara to the Saraswati Devi, the peacocks. It was a beautiful video. Uh, innumerable things are there like that. Some newborn children, very newborn baby, what the mother was chanting, mantra, she was chanted that mantra. And a very, very small child, very small child, maybe eight months or nine months, just sitting like that only, when she was playing some Adi Sankaracharya uh, mantras, and she was doing the, enjoying that mantra so much, and then she was, uh, with the hands, no, she was doing the thala very beautiful. So this is you know, previous lifetimes of the karma lord. Punya, the merits are, allow the baby from the childhood itself to think about the God. Uh, so if the jivatma, the inside, that is different, and the bodily wants and desires and uh, needs and all, I need a car, I need this, I need a program, I need some financial support, these are regular, no? This is for the body's sake. But the Jivatma that is experiencing 
the thirsty the thirsty i saw in the world i came just and going like in a garden no i have go into the garden pick some flowers for my puja i went to the human garden i saw so many beautiful flowers very beautiful flowers all of you i pick some flowers for my puja oh shankar bhagwan for your puja sambhavantu mama janma janmani if i come to a small body i limited myself and enter into a small body with my huge light i just fix in this little body and then going to the garden take a flower so this is a flower this is another flower josan is a flower ravana is a flower some so many flowers like that colony is a flower some some of the flowers i pick the flower and then offer that flower to the almighty feet this is a flower born for you they did so much seva for you oh god these flowers are for your seva these are the flowers i pick from the human race beautiful flowers extremely extremely beautiful beautiful flowers so children that's why the jeevatma have the thirsty i saw the thirsty in all of you of course you came sometimes for, um, for the regular individual blessings to see kamma's blessing but when you came closer to amma never ask lot of people anything <laughs> what they say so i forget everything okay note down your points everything note down don't forget anything come to me and then uh, ask your things whatever the desires you have you have to ask uh, then people came they forget to give that card also to me they enter into my aura and city comes there and watching my face like that and they are so beautiful people the jiva i saw the jiva thirsty at that time the jiva was seeking for to get the connection with the the right the connection with the right the jiva forget to ask this and that oh son you want to ask something for a job for your health problems for your wife said send the message to me forget to tell that to amma oh i am i'm sorry what my wife says what my wife says mother he was asking myself what your wife says to you you have to tell that to me mother i forget everything to see your smile no uh, you have to tell about what my mother wife what my wife says in my home you have to tell to me <laughs> my children are so innocent and beautiful people what the thirsty i saw in their hearts are it's not coming to the individual blessing the jiva the insight the in self the self inside that self want the connection with the supreme light of all the lights the connection that's what in the gajendra mokshanam story in bhagavatam we saw in the story it's not the crocodile caught up the leg of the gajendra the elephant the world is caught up the leg of the human race how much you want to come out of from the bondages of this world impossible without the grace of the guru without the grace of guru impossible guru is so gracious and compassing pouring love on yourself guru shows all the time and guru is uh, incomprehensible love no that is guru guru padam sakala charachara vyapaka charanam where is guru padam guru padam is not somewhere and do the abhishekam or puja it is not that it is all pervading all knowing all witnessing the present past future everything is knowing by the supreme light of the god guru is not limited in their limited body body have health problems everything comes to your guru also but guru is not that guru is the light of the lights so that's why this guru purnima before the guru purnima seriously meditate all of you very seriously this total until the guru purnima day be intensely pray think about the jeevatma within you the thirsty the love on me it is not the love on me children your jeevatma is want to connected with the self that is the true uh, so that's why 
innumerable people like anna and all of you came to amma in in the journey of your life i just came to you i want to pick yourself in my puja basket like a beautiful lotus flower i put your parijata flower on the divine lotus feet of shankar bhagwan bhagwan bless my child bless my son bless my babies all the people are very good people they are caught up in the worldly maya don't allow them in the maya and bless them with the abundance of light peace happiness we are here in this world very short time very very short time very less time only not not long time our work is very limited life span is also limited in the ancient time life span was long life span but our life span is very less in this very less life span do all your duties to your family don't um, uh, give up your family duties i am not mean to give up everything do that the attachment must be with the inside with the god how gajendra was gajendra never think about god in before he was just going the family enjoying the family his wife and children and so many wives and lot of happinesses with the family only when he caught up this um, crocodile then he was praying the god oh god help me help me help me what help now he was asking help my body help myself what is the self the body self the elephant body he have to asking the help then he was realize the elephant was realize oh god anyhow i am going to give up my body very soon i have no more energy to call you also but myself my atma is here that is asking liberation moksha to merge in yourself so god please do that he was in silently not asking anything not making any sound also in silently he was praying the almighty oh god please allow me to merge in yourself oh god please allow me to merge in yourself i am not asking to protect me from this crocodile forget about the crocodile i am not asking about to protect me my life external life from the crocodile i am already caught up by the crocodile each human being in this world is caught up by the crocodile of this worldly families only things but the liberation is not for the body liberation for the soul again it is going to come back to the world if the liberation comes in the spiritual way then the soul is going to merge in the supreme truth it never come back again coming is untruth going is untruth in the middle what the small merit we do that merit is going to give us a good body with the good body the human body we have to do the good services to the divine in the form of the society where is divine divine is all pervading no everything is divine only whatever we are seeing in the world is divine only what all the services you are going to anybody give to anybody water you are giving some water to people that is reach the divine only how many needs in the world today children uh, people are entered into the very dangerous zone of food is lacking in in 60 70 years right now what happened to our mother earth mother a soil was completely spoiled uh, what how much water around the mother earth we have um, a lot of water around all the oceans remaining mother earth is constructions all the things and the remaining mother earth is we spoil the mother earth with the completely with the fertilizers and all these war weapons and so many pollutions and computer pollutions and so many pollutions we did mother earth fertility was right now 20% only if we have the cows no when cows are there then all the cows and cow dung cow urine is going to make the mother earth again fertility fertility comes the cows are not there i am speaking about the brahmi cows are going to make the mother earth fertility the brahmi cows are krishna time um 80 lakhs crores of the 80 lakhs crores of the um 
cows are their Krishna time. Right now, not even two crores of cows also not there. Two crores. Eighty lakhs of cow, cow, cows are disappeared. Two crores of cows also not there. All the cows are eaten by human beings. So, no cows. So, the cow dung is not there. Cow urine is not there. How, how can we make this mother earth fertility? So, in future, when we think about the future, the children, their children, grandchildren are definitely going to enter into the even 10% also no fertility. Again, they have to use the fertilizers only. With the fertilizers are dangerous, then people are born with the cancer. People are, right now we get cancer because of these, all the unnatural food and unnatural things so we have got the cancer right now in in after 50 60 years people everybody is going to born with the cancer only that that's why how to protect the mother earth the protection of mother earth is very 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 essential right now so many challenges in front of us what the swami told so many things also she made lack of beautiful documents also documentaries also about it ganga project and all the things she showed lot to india here when she was working in india amma's without children seva anna did seva for the organization we miss him my gratitude to ravi annaya and my gratitude to all my children for all of you who did so much seva for amma uh, my special gratitude to all my children my special motherly blessings to all of you also who did so much unbelievable seva amma's love uh, my all my uh, love all the time on all of you whatever your problems i, I have to be take care of those things but my responsibility towards you is to tell let your self have to be get the connection with the supreme light that is the goal don't forget that goal meditate well right now guru Purnima is going to come very soon children uh, pray children meditate children guru Purnima, without guru's grace impossible to attain god's realization so I love you so much, like anything, uh, always from the bottom of my heart. Elizabeth, I love you so much. Uh, you did a great program for my Josan and also for Ravi and Maya. Uh, I love you like anything, child. Children who participate in the two programs, I'm a special love for both of you. Um, so it is a wonderful Shanti did the connections and working so hard to mobilize all these things and I, my gratitude and love blessings to her and Elizabeth and to all of you always from the bottom of my heart I love you like anything children uh, shall I speak everybody um, after seeing the video I will just say hello to everybody one one minute now okay Elizabeth Okay, you would like me to show the video now, Ama? Yes, I said you would. Okay, I'll get that ready. It'll be one moment.
thank you Elizabeth that's beautiful now very beautiful thank you Elizabeth uh, finally shall I speak two three words to all the people who remaining some people yes please. final words embodiment of divine souls Amma's most beloved children today is the mother's day so many children are greeting Amma for the Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I am so grateful for my children. I am proud of my children are in the spiritual path. And they did lot of selfless services to the mankind. And I am really so happy. I saw today lot of love and love thirsty in all my children to see their mother. Uh, really I am so grateful for that. And my love and my always my special gratitude to my children who did so much service. Uh, in their entire lifetimes to make the programs materialize to see people and people are in pains and challenges and problems and with your, when you are in the program in the city thousands of people got the blessings and their pains and thirst was subsided by talking with the mother so you did in, without uh, knowing all the things you did a great job uh, to do the program to organize the program to be the part of the program in different different service maybe car driving maybe arrange the program maybe hall arrangements maybe innumerable thing food arrangements like that so many arrangements people did fundraisings and uh, amma's arrangements and amma's residence arrangements and bring amma's food from the home all the things you know, so much taking care of the crew and crew did an incredible job for amma all the 25 years innumerable people sacrifices so much and did an incredible job for amma so really uh, like ravan also what he says when we came here he says a word to me amma i am not asking like your brother they never uh, treat me like their sister you know they are always addressing me like mother only even my biological mother also treat me like a mother, divine mother. So she was also treat me like that only. She was very, uh, very purely she was talking and uh, everybody says, mother says and Raviana says and Akkaya, all the people what this says to me, we dedicated our life to you, use us like instruments in your hand. The what way you have to give us order, we will do that and give opportunity this is opportunity for us a life opportunity for us to do the seva uh, come closer to you and uh, they says that so that's why Revan also did lot of the water projects and all the activities and behind the curtain with all your blessing with all your support no everybody was giving the fundraising and money support and all the supports engineers are giving the construction supports and everything he was standing to do the construction part of, part of the work and also uh, all the works, you know, it was amazing. Uh, very last uh, January 1st he was called me. Uh, before that he came one day and I cooked some food for him. That is my last food, I cooked the food and gave to his uh, He was enjoying so much, uh, not much, uh, too much salt and we never used too much salt. Uh, very simple little salt and he liked it so much and uh, he was asking me uh, it is so delicious food I am blessed so much maybe is it the last food for me he says no 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 why you have to say like that I think it is last food for me it is enough for my life uh, I got the very delicious food from your hand he says that no 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 son so don't say that son I say him after that he went and January 1st every year he comes and he was he brought some special apples for me and a new year calendar for me and flower garlands and a, a big garland for me and he was offering to my feet every year he did that uh, he did that for my birthday time and January 1st time Ugadi time Amamma ceremony time all these uh, special times he brought the garlands and sari and also some gifts and those things for my son uh, then January 1st he called and I am really not able to come to you because uh, health is a little bit not accepted. If I am feeling okay in one or two days I will definitely come and bring the new calendar, new year calendar is also I already brought that. I will come after two, three days later. I told them don't come immediately, take rest, relax and then he went to Chennai. Uh, somebody took him to Chennai. 
and uh, he got COVID there. Uh, that is the problem he got. Otherwise, uh, he is going to be working some more years also. He got the COVID, severe COVID there because of the uh, moving with all the patients there and um, the, in the air it comes to him, he was not able to tolerate, his immune power was less at the time. Uh, with the COVID he passed away, January 10th he passed away. Uh, so January 1st he called him, um, then we, we are in deep shock to listen about it and then they don't like to give the body of Anna, uh, we will do that in Chennai itself, we never accept that. No, who did so much save for me all the years? We are not seeking like a brother, no, not that. Who did seva, seva for the organization, so much seva, selflessly, we have to honor his uh, last uh, journey. So we need that body and our family, people, everybody, they have go to Chennai and get the body from that. They wrap the body in three, four times with a lot of wrappings there. And also the, the temp, uh, hospital people accompanying in their own van. They never give the body to our vans or to our vehicles. Uh, they never allow us, our people also going closer to that. It is going to spread to so many people, this is. That time COVID was very dangerous everywhere at the areas. And then uh, the, it brought to our own gardens. We have a lot of gardens there. So one of the garden where we did the ceremony for Akaya, in the same place, um, we did the ceremony for Ravian also in the same place where we did the Kaya ceremony, in the same place we burnt the body and we took the, uh, my other brother is, another brother is also there, he did that. Actually his son have to come and do that, um, otherwise uh, the soul is not in rest. But son is not able to come, but other brother, he took the responsibility, he did a very great job. He took all the responsibility, he come closer to the body, and he put the fire to the body and he, the 11 days they have to do the ceremonies. Lot of pujas in Hindu system, so many pujas there, so many prayers there. Every day we have to cook the food there and we have to do the, um, when they give up their body, we have to put a small golden, like a small ball in their mouth and chant some special mantra. Those are the, not the regular Vedic mantras, different mantras. All the mantras, so many priests and so much pujas, all the things are happened. After that, every day uh, we have to cook the different, different, uh, sweet, uh, very, very special prasadams. All the food and special prasadams. And we did the puja for his photo. And the soul was 11 days with us only. The soul never gave, immediately never give up the body. After give up the body, soul was wandering around their people. The 11 days soul was going around us and everybody. That time we have to do all the pujas and give the liberation for the soul not to wander here in this world, you have to go to the other celestial worlds. So, and then he, the brother, second brother took the uh, holy ash to the merge in the holy rivers and also sent to the holy ash to the Ganga to merge in the Ganga also all the activities are finished before 11 days itself. It was so big program, very big program. And thousands of people came to see Anna. In the COVID time also, the COVID people not allowed to come closer everybody to offer the garlands to him. Everybody have to offer the garlands only to the picture only. We cannot go closer to him. Then finally, everybody uh, offered the garlands and flowers on him and so much ghee and sandalwood uh, sticks we have to uh, put on the fireplace and uh, they with the mantras they did that and so much ghee tins so many ghee tins they pour on that not with the kerosene not with the petrol they can never burn to the body like that uh, so we burned the body with the uh, that and uh, children um, we are we, we know the birth and death, what is this play? We know this, so that's why we comfort everybody, don't cry and understand the play. It's coming and going only, but his life is a good life, no? He did so much seva for a special organization 
and for the needy people who is in pain without waters they did lot of the millions of people got the water water problem solved and health problems are solved by the pure drinking water and education hospitals leprosy centers and also personal when we go to the personal temple tours he went by like a pilot um, tour and checking everywhere where we are staying what temples we are going go to the temples and talk with the priest and take the permissions written permissions from them because in the temple tours who accompanied with amma in the temple tours they know very well there was very big big queues in the temples thousands of people are standing in the queue suddenly i went there and break down the queue and go inside is really not um, not okay to do that when we take the permission then we are authentically show this is the we two months before three months before we took the permission written permission from the government and also from the temple and also priests also going to know we are coming so on to time my time is so precious i can't stay on the queues and waiting for long hours so for that reason these people who comes for from the western countries they have so much love to see the culture of the sanatan dharma for the reason they came to this temple tour uh, for the reason we have to respect our guests of the comes from the other countries this is the way we are break down the lines and without hurting their feelings some people are thinking i am very selfishly taking some people with me and stop all the people everybody belong to me in the world no who is other people for me i have no other people he is this is belong to me he is not belong to us that is not there in my life everybody is belong to me people who stands in the lines also thousands of people also belong to me these people who accompanying with amma is also belong to me people who never trust me also they belong to me people who loves me belongs to me people who hate me also belongs to me everybody animals birds and everything is belongs to me in this world only so that's why with humbly we uh, without hurting their feelings they are standing so many long hours in the in chamundeswari temple long hours outside standing in the dust and uh, the dust comes with the air and people are standing so hard there and suddenly when we break down the line and go directly into the main chain people some people are offended like that you know for the reason we make them comfortable we show that before enter enter into that ravana these pilot people have been there look at this letter right now amma is coming and her group is also coming we took the permission so and so time just from for example we our travel is in december we took the permission in august itself so this is the temple tour august itself we took the permission august september october november december four months before we took the permission from the higher authorities of the state government and also the um, temple uh, authorities and also from the priests and from from the administration of the temple chairmen of the temple and we from all the people we have all the letters with them and how many people are going there that is also there your pictures also there everything is recordedly there in the temple so that's why nobody have no uh, disturbances and no complicated things there we are nicely enter into the temple and our all our temple tours are very peaceful we enjoy so much and we we saw the divine culture ancient times of the sanatan dharma culture uh, in bharat uh, with my children from all over the world i really thankful for anna arranged that so much risk there he have to take permissions from so many people and he was wait there and uh, take that he took all the risk his total life was dedicated for myself so my gratitude to him my amma's special blessings also for him his soul is in divine peace only let god have to bless him uh, to be a good life and good soul have to reach a mother and that's so beautiful so in in first we have only our father picture in the shrine after mother passed away mother picture was also with father they both together and then akkaya passed away akkaya picture we there and we felt very sad to pass away akkaya after ravana passed away and after ravana passed away then we have 
so many activity works are there pending works are there these works are stopped there and um, so we felt very his presence is not here and somebody have to come and do the works and the dedication is very important to do any activities also he did with everything with a dedication um, so we miss him so much thank you so much for all of you love him like your own brother uh, so he is like my son uh, we miss my son so much and amma special blessings for you and for him for everybody also in the entire world let everybody have to useful for the society do some seva because of the water project so many people got the benefit to drink the pure water and they have all the stomach de related diseases and li like uh, liver diseases and so many diseases called stomach um, pains and they have water problems you know because a lot of immune power was gone from for all the things right now that problem was disappear after the water pl plants and housing projects and the good things you know we got opportunity to do the good things with all of your support only we did this we never do by ourselves with all your support we are my gratitude to all of you my love to all of you thank you so much to support me to all these years my great children amma special blessings once and my crews they i have nothing to speak um, beyond words they did incredible incredible job six months they gave up everything and completely dedicated and how they took care of me like their eyeball inside the eye when i was climbing the steps they were watching me michael son jesse son everybody was watching me like andrew son everybody was ben son inara jan jan baby how much all these people did to save us so much you know and unbelievable services people gave to amma brett son so many people so many people give beautiful and my host in their homes and my organizers and my supporters and my people and everybody everyone did an incredible job amma special blessings once again to all my people from the bottom of my heart thank you once again children i love you so much mother's day special blessings for all of you on this auspicious day i love you so much children thank you om swasti prajabhya paripalayantam nyayena margena mahi mahi saham go brahmanebhya subhamastu nityam lokan samasta sukino bhavantum lokan samasta sukino bhavantum लोकान समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु स्वस्ति थैंक यू एलिजेथ थैंक यू चिल्ड्रन लव यू चिल्ड्रन Love you so much, children. We're so grateful, Amma, that you shared Mother's Day with us.